Well, my name is Dale Mills. I'm uh, an activist with uh, Occupy Sydney, but I'm also a lawyer, and so I'll be doing some legal support on the day. Okay, and tell us a bit about what your evening is entailed tonight. Okay, well, it was a very long meeting. Uh, it was a meeting that went on for just over three hours. There were perhaps 75 people there, so um, it was a very full meeting. Um, people were very enthusiastic about the Occupy Sydney protest on Sydney, and there was over an hour's discussion about what's been happening internationally, particularly the, the Occupy that's been um, happening in Wall Street. So, um, so for Sydney, which tends not to have too much protest activity, it was a very big meeting and people were very excited about what was happening. How many people were in the room? I think there were about 75 people there in the room tonight, uh, which for uh, a Sydney organising meeting of protesters is a very large meeting. Uh, meetings of this size happen in Sydney perhaps every several years, so it's quite a big meeting. Great, okay. And from a legal perspective, can you talk a little bit about um, ideas on, that might help the protesters on, on the first day of occupation? Well, um, well, I suppose the general position is that um, the way that the courts put it is that the right to peacefully assembly is jealously guarded as part of our legal tradition. And um, that right to um, protest or that freedom to protest has been um, hacked away little by little by more and more restrictive laws over the years and more powers to the police. Um, what's happened is that it's assumed um, in New South Wales law that there is a freedom to protest and that there are certain conditions or restrictions put on that freedom. So when people go on Saturday, um, because some preliminary paperwork has been complied with, uh, people can take part in a protest. Um, they can um, inconvenience pedestrians, because that's the very nature of protest sometimes, and um, people will be complying with the law. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, occupation sites, and my understanding is that we'll be deciding on a space to actually occupy. It is the Occupy movement. Mm. Could you talk a little bit about uh, places in the city that are extremely bad idea, for, for example, of a place to occupy? Well, Sydney has a patchwork of, of legislation and regulation which gives the authorities added powers in relation to protests. And so uh, I would have thought a protest, for example, at the Sydney Opera House may not have been the best idea um, because there's quite um, onerous penalties available um, to the police if they want to deal with protesters um, or um, unlawful occupations at the Sydney Opera House. Um, it's a political reality that anything happening in the Sydney Harbour foreshore authority area um, down near the ferries at Circular Quay or perhaps the Museum of Contemporary Art, I would have thought that the police would pounce on people if they um, uh, were involved in an unlawful occupation there. I think some of the, the better, better areas for people to occupy would be something like Hyde Park. Um, or perhaps Sydney Square, but, um, but even in relation to Hyde Park and Sydney Square, if people were to unlawfully camp there, then they would be breaking the law. The real issue is not so much whether people are breaking the law or not, but whether the police will enforce the law. And that becomes a political decision. Um, the more people there are, the less um, aggressive the police are likely to be. Um, if those in authority think that it will be a high political price to pay, um, then they're less likely in, they're less likely to enforce the law. Um, and also the way that the protesters present themselves to the police will be important as well. A good example of that is um, a protest which blocked off both sides of George Street um, on a Friday night at peak hour between 5 and 7 p.m. several years ago. This was a protest by the Tamil community and they uh, blocked traffic um, in a way um, that was very disciplined and very polite towards the police. They walked um, onto the street and sat down and refused to get up. Two hours later, the spokesperson for the Tamil community occupying George Street um, gave um, a nice speech, thanked the police. They all got up and within two minutes they had dispersed. When protesters show that degree of discipline, the police have difficulty dealing with it and they're more likely to adopt a gentle approach rather than attacking individuals and arresting them. Mm. Okay. Uh, 
Do you have any further advice about uh, protest of behaviour or decisions that, that um, the group might make that might seem harmless but um, you know, could turn out to be uh, quite um, you know, could enrage or you know the yeah. authorities unwittingly. Let's yeah. put it that way. Just hold for a moment. Okay, you like to go? Well, well, a lot of protesters, um, including myself, don't own cars, and so um, it never occurs to us that blocking the street and blocking traffic can be a real worry for the police. But that is something that really concerns the police, um, because the police, by and large, all own cars and they can all drive. So there's a bit of a cultural difference there between the police and protesters. Uh, we don't really care whether the cars are blocked and traffic is inconvenience. The police do tend to be very concerned about that. So that's always a bit of a, a bit of a um, a hot, hot spot when it comes to the police. Similarly, there are some things that concern protesters that the police really don't care about. One is wearing identification. Any police officer not wearing identification or covering it up with a yellow vest will really annoy protesters. But the police and uh, their supervising police officers don't really get it. They don't realise that that's an easy way to wind people up and annoy people uh, really very quickly. Um, I think generally, in dealing with the police, it's although the law frames your dealings with the police, essentially it's a power struggle. Um, if there's a hundred protesters and one police officer, there really won't be any arrests. But if there's a lot more police officers than protesters, then arrests might very well occur. Some of those may be unlawful arrests, and there may be remedies and ways to complain about that later. Um, but what the police will do is simply carry out the arrest and leave those things for other people to worry about later. Okay. Uh, have you got anything else you'd like to add? Do you think there are any important points that need to be covered? This is going up before Saturday? Yes. During the main Occupy Sydney protest, which is going to be in the Reserve Bank of Australia, there's going to be a number of workshops on protesting and the law, um, and so people should uh, just keep a uh, lookout for those and then come along if they want to know more about their legal rights on the day.